And where do you think the biggest opportunity? So like the, in terms of these emerging markets and understanding, you know, each market is different, but what do you think the biggest opportunities are for technologists and entrepreneurs? They really do want to make an impact. They do want to uh, kind of uh, affect change. Is there specific things that you're saying, look, this is an unsolved issue, or this is the area that I think more people should be paying attention to, but they're not yet. Yes. I think, look, I think there's two, two, two parts that are kind of the big kind of, areas where the, the the work needs to go into and, and where the opportunities lie. The one is unfortunately a little bit tricky and that's around regulation. You know, we've, again, it depends on the country. We've seen some countries like Malaysia, you know, look, they're very forward thinking in terms of how they think about technology and financial services. And, you know, we, we spent a couple of years working with, with their government and regulators to come up with a, essentially the first properly, regu- you know, licensing regime in emerging markets, which they issued and, and, you know, 30 companies applied and, and you know, we, 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 we have that license now and operate legally in, in Malaysia. So you have examples of that, but they're few and far between. In a lot of countries, in particular in Africa, you know, the regulatory regimes are not adequate yet for, not just for crypto, but for mass market kind of consumer finance products. It's not because I, you know, I'm not sure if it's because people really don't want it to be like that. It's just the markets have not evolved like that. And, you know, there's just not been the economic, you know, activity to support bringing, a, you know, another bank or another challenger bank or a crypto company into the, into the market. So a lot of the work that we are doing and, and, and other companies in the space as well, not just, and other fintech companies, is on the lobbying and regulatory side. How do we create an environment where people, companies can actually flourish? Like there's no, you know, in the US and, and in the UK, you can apply for a challenger bank license. You can become a payments. I mean, it's very easy to become a payments company or a remittance company. In a lot of these countries, those classifications don't even exist. So, so that's a problem for fintech generally. The good news for crypto is that because they don't exist, as long as the regulators are pragmatic and open, they are, it, it presents opportunity to create new legislation that's specific to crypto. Because one of the worst things I think that can happen in the industry in crypto, you know, gl- globally is that people are forced into other licensing regimes that don't apply to crypto given how unique, you know, the industry is. So I think that's where a lot of the work goes in. And then the, you know, the second part we, we briefly covered on is around, you know, we call it distribution, but, you know, we can rephrase that as building trust in these markets. And, you know, if, you know, if you are a highly commoditized product or something that's purely, you know, product that's purely focused on price, like Uber is a good example, right? Like it's just, you know, how cheap can you, I mean, it's how hard is it to get into a car and drive somewhere? It's just how cheap can you make it relative to something else, right? There's not, I mean, there's a little bit of trust required to get into the car, but it's not, you know, that's not, I wouldn't say that's the main problem that they're trying to solve. With with people's money, you know, people are very strange about their money and they, you know, the trust equation is, is very complex. And again, depending on the country, um, or the type of product, you are going to have to do something that people are going to actually trust you that they, you're not going to steal the money, that you're not, you know, the things are not going to disappear and so on. And that's where most of the work I think is going into, certainly from our side and, and you know, where I think most of the work should be going into is that how do you build trust in these markets where they you know, again, starting all the way from education to how the product functions, to where it's available, to how it's co-branded with, you know, things that people already know that, you know, and that's the opportunity because if you can build trust in these markets, you can, you know, that that trust you can leverage so broadly. And, you know, again, if you look in China or Indonesia, like some of these super apps, right, where people use one app and they trust that thing so much. And now you can put anything into that product. You can, you know, people start with car sharing and then the next thing they have financial services and, you know, it, you know, texting and whatever. So, that trust is so valuable in these markets, again, given they are generally low trust environments. But once you cross that threshold, then, then you have a lot to, to work with. And that's, I think, the biggest opportunity for any company, whether you're crypto or just kind of a general consumer company in, in, in tech. 